So, um, if you don't know what spell chess is, you're not alone, because I don't really know what it is either. <laughs> but I think we'll just explore, and uh, let's click this. I think it's the first step. Do I dare read the instructions, or should I go in without reading them? How about I skim them? There's two spells. Okay, that's simple enough. Jump and freeze. Players have limited spells. They recharge after a few moves. Yada, yada. So pieces become frozen. Wait, how do jumps work? Jump applied to one square. So you can jump over that square. Okay. Simple enough. 5-2 versus random. I haven't done this before, so... This will be interesting. I am playing against Sam Bust E4. So let's play E4. And these pieces are going to take some time to get used to. I have no idea what opening will be best in this game. So I assume these are my spells. So can I, like, if I... What happens if I, like, freeze this and then take this? Now the I assume the queen is frozen. Oh, but it's only frozen for one move? Oh. Oh, I have four left. Yeah. Uh-oh. A little bit scared about this. Wait, what if I use my jump and take the king? Maybe that's not possible anymore. Yeah, this is... Uh, <laughs> this is, again, very new for me. I'm trying to get the feel for this. I think my opponent is just crumbling a bit. Hasn't used a spell yet. Now getting forked. Maybe I should have used my freeze there. How does the game end? Oh, frozen pieces do not check or checkmate kings. Oh, interesting. Well, is it is a bishop frozen? Do they freeze their own bishop? Oh, the freeze only lasts for one move. Okay, so now I'm curious. If I if I freeze and then take the bishop, what's going to happen? Am I just going to win now? <laughs> Cuz the king's frozen, and then once this area is unfrozen, I take. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> uh So I feel like it's so easy to lose in this game. Like to forget about the fact that your opponent can check you and then freeze the area around the king. Maybe the opponent could have counter counter freeze. We didn't see the jump being used. <laughs> um, let's just play again. Let's play. Maybe I'll get a new opponent playing say no more. This is probably very bad for my overall like chess ability. It'll probably take some adjusting going back to normal chess. Yeah, I miss a duck. Duck chess is like simple to understand. This is a bit more mind bending. Yeah, for anyone confused, feel free to try and read like this block of text. Maybe it's small on the, the stream layout, but is my opponent going to try and play a cow? Bishop e2 is not the cow, though. Oh, maybe I should have frozen. I probably should use the freeze, like, earlier in the game. Hmm. Wait, I have to... I was going to play the move and then use the freeze, but I have to use the freeze first. And then play the move. So now I'm hitting the knight.
And I should be winning the knight next move. Welcome back to Choco. Oh yeah, we have the frozen Rosen emote, which I guess is fitting for this position. Except I'm not the one who's frozen. There goes a knight. Wait a minute, can my opponent take and then freeze my king? And my knight? Uh-oh. I, I might be losing here. I don't have a counter freeze. Opponent's taking time. Oh dear. No, I can't I can't do that or that. Can I jump? Wait, how does this jump work? If I put it I have to read the instructions. The jump is applied to one square. If there is a piece on that square, other pieces can jump. Wait, so can I jump and move into the frozen yeah, because the rook's not frozen. So this and then jump. Let's go. I'm not losing. <laughs> okay, that was a close call. <laughs> oh. So that was just a queen trade. Now the game continues. So they have their... Oh, they have their jump. And I have my freeze. And they're recharging their freeze. So I think I'm getting the hang of this. So if it's only one square, that's interesting. Wait a minute, can I just take and then, or uh, freeze and then take and then GG? Oh, it's not GG. Opponent has one way to get out of it. Similar to what I did to get out of my predicament. Oh, this is actually kind of fascinating. There's like so many situations where it seems hopeless, but. Oh, no, it is GG. I was thinking the rook could jump over the pawn, but the rook is also frozen. Or wait, is it GG? Because the opponent can use a counter freeze. I'm so confused. <laughs> If the opponent counter freezes, can I jump over my pawn to take this pawn? I don't know how refreezing works. Like if you have an ice cube, you let it thaw and then you refreeze it. Is it still the same ice cube? How does GG work? GG works like this. <laughs> GG. Yeah, so I think the game just ends when you take the king, similar to duck chess. Yeah, I'm really curious if the opponent could have like used the freeze. Oh wow, then it's double freeze. And then let's say move uh move here. Yeah, then I would have my knight would have been frozen. Why can take the next move? Because my freeze isn't recharged. Let's play a quicker game. Let's play three two. But it feels like I'm getting a feel for this. Yeah, let's just freeze this territory, and I feel like it's decent to use the freeze earlier in the game. It also seems like there's going to be some possible tricks coming up. Yeah, everyone has a provisional rating. <laughs> this is such a new variant. Ooh. Okay, so... Oh, wow, that's almost, almost checkmate. Because I can't play B4, I can't block with any of those pieces, but I can use this, this, and then this. 
Oh, I feel so strong. Yeah, that was the point of Queenie 2. Queenie 2 is basically check. Because I'm threatening to take the king with the jump. Gugu. Okay, I'll play Gugu. Yeah, so for people that are confused, this is really... I mean, it's still normal chess. It's just a matter of understanding how the the two different spells work. Um, so I think I've pretty much grasped it. Although <laughs> it still takes some getting used to. So freeze, it's just a, a three by three square that's frozen for a move. And then the jump is one square that you can choose to jump over. So I guess it, it wouldn't make sense to use a jump to like move a knight. Because knights can already jump. I wonder who the strongest player in this is. Also, can I just take the pawn and... Oop! <laughs> I'm used to duck chess where I take the piece and then place a duck. But in this game, I have to use a spell and then make the move. Um, so let's just... Oh, let's play this. I'm playing the Irish Gambit. This is actually a, a real chess opening that's just a little bit dubious. I have to watch out for the... Like, if, if the opponent plays this and then freezes, I guess I can counter freeze, or I can develop a knight. Oh, did I post a YouTube video? I think I scheduled a YouTube video for, like, a minute ago. I see the comment from YNG Warthog. How many people get notifications for YouTube? Okay, so my opponent's threatening to take my king because they have the jump. But what they missed is I also have the jump. And I'm going to jump over the pawn and take the queen. And I just feel like such a wizard. I do apologize for the YouTube thumbnail if it disturbs some people. Um, can I play, well, let's play, wait a minute. Opponent's going to do this and then freeze me. Yeah. Maybe I just do this. Just avoid getting checked. The thumbnail, um, I actually use this software. Um, it's like this new AI software I discovered that allows for, for face swapping. So I don't know how many people will notice so closely the, <laughs> the details of the face swap. I think black meant to freeze me because I can just take this now. And that's looking pretty good. Uh-oh. Wait, they just use their freeze. Now I'm going to use my freeze. I think that's GG. Unless there's some magical spell I'm not seeing, but I don't think the jump will save black in this position. Even if my king's counterattacked, I'm I'm the first one to capture. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm enjoying this so far. Yeah, th this is a thumbnail. <laughs> I was inspired by, there was like a post on, I think it was Anarchy Chess of Levy's face on this image. So I was inspired to also put my face on it. Yeah, the chin is very Giga Chad-like. Spooky ghost observing another game. Except...
Oh, okay. This is the highest rated opponent I've played so far in spell chess. Still undefeated. Oh, cool. Thank you. Oh, the <laughs> people don't see. There is a little message on top that said that I'm streaming. Uh, do I play the Ponziani? No, let's play the opening I intended to play the previous game of paralyze or freezing and then taking. Wait, my opponent can play this and then play a Stafford Gambit. Then I take, take. <laughs> we transpose into Stafford. Oh, opponent wants to jump. So let's play this. That's so important to have a sense of danger because it's so easy to forget about the jump or the freeze. Like they were also threatening to take and then freeze me too. So it's like two different ways to win. Wait, what if they take and then freeze everything? And then they're still threatening the jump. But that's not happening. So let's play this. I'm realizing it's like... It's super dangerous not having the the spell to like counter freeze. Like they could take and then freeze this area. Yeah, Ponziani theory is is developing a little bit. Wait, what if I take and then or, um freeze? Which area do I want to freeze? Maybe this area. Freeze and then take. I feel like I'm just scratching the surface of like strategy in this game. Well, I guess like there's no one on the planet that has more than like a week of experience in this, right? Oops. Wait, I have this move though. Oh, that was very lucky. I could play the Queen H5 too. My Queen H5. Oh, Queen H5 is actually really nifty. Oh, Queen H5 was a terrible move. Oops. <laughs> uh, it's okay, though. We're just trading queens. And actually, I'll, I'll recapture the rook, so it's, it's all a fair trade, I think. If anything, I'm winning material. Let's use a jump. And I take the rook. Okay. <laughs> My rook just developed. So that actually worked out. Like Queen H5, I think objectively was okay. But Black still has a freeze, so they could freeze my rook and probably win it. Oh, but then I can counter freeze. Oh, I only have one. Wait, what does this mean? Times one. Does that mean I have one jump left? I actually don't know how it works when it goes down to zero. So let's play this. I might be frozen. I actually don't know what's happening here. I'm just trying to confuse the opponent. Can you jump a pawn to promote? Well, pawns can only move one at a time, at least when you get close to promotion. I guess pawns could jump in such oh, a way. My queen. Going to have to start calling it the Rosen Gambit versus Botez Gambit. Quack, quack. Ah. <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I want to like take and then freeze, but then black can counter freeze. So I think I just take and then win the pawn. Wait, what? Rosen Gambit versus Botez Gambit. Yeah, maybe that's just a fair queen trade. Oh, you thought the rook was a pawn. Yeah, it's not so often you can move a rook out from h1 when <laughs> leaving the bishop in pawn like this. Okay. I think I'm going to be winning on time. Oh, point wants to do this. But again, I can counter freeze. Okay, <laughs> one on time. <laughs> GG. Do we consider freezes as like pieces? Is it worth to trade a pawn with freeze? I actually have no idea. Like this is so new that I'm also just trying to discover the strategy. Like I'm sure there's an element, I and mean, there's a huge element of like concrete tactical play. But then there's probably also the element of like long-term positional strategy too. Like, should I be saving? Oh, I only get two jumps. Ah, so we start with two jumps and five freezes. Interesting. So maybe it's worth like saving the freezes until later. Or saving the jumps until later. Oh! Speaking of jumps. Oh no. Oh, uh, the Scandi is a terrible opening in this game. Oh, it's a really bad opening. Wait, what do I do now? This. Uh, let's freeze. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I just want to freeze the queen and then play this. And then try and win the queen. <laughs> now, white has a very strong move here. We'll see if Obese Reese can find it. Man, it's so easy to have these blind spots. Yeah, I think there's one way to save the queen. What's that saying? God save the queen? What would God do? After white's move, I'll, I'll share my thoughts. Oh, it's a counter freeze. I guess I was thinking bishop b5, but I forgot about the counter freeze. So let's play this. And then I guess I'm just kind of sad here. Wow, so I, we just traded freezes basically. And now I'm down a queen. Oh man, and, and he wants to jump and take. I don't know if the jump replenishes like after my next move. So I'll be safe. But it's still like if I move, is it gonna show is his jump gonna replenish? Let's see. It does. Okay, so I'm I'm very fortunate to have not allowed Queen takes King. But I'm in a lot of danger here. So after his next move, my jump will replenish, or my freeze will replenish. Ah, so 
This situation actually relates to one of the comments from earlier. How much value do we put on the spells? Because I'm I basically have one extra jump, but white has a queen for it. Hmm. Also, how do I defend? There, there, there. Man. That's not good. There's no way to defend. I mean, I could freeze, but... And there's a counter freeze. And maybe I... No, knight a6 allows bishop a6. About knight d5. I think I just play g6 and just lose everything. <laughs> Try and save my king. This is pretty bad, though, I think. I think my only hope is time. It's turning into a bullet spell chess game. Hi, Eric. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you, Sipper T. Hope you have a great year ahead. That's yeah, starting off well. As I drink my, this is my Starbucks, my, my free birthday drink from Starbucks. I got a, a pumpkin cold brew. Obese free is taking a little bit too much time. Bishop b4 or bishop b5. I think I just take that. I don't fully see the idea. Yeah, so now. Maybe I'll play bishop h6 is the trickiest move. There's only two second increments. Okay. I feel a little bit bad there. Hey, I broke 1600. I mean, I was getting crushed. Queen takes rook. Who's the highest rated player challenging me? Okay, let's play uh, gui Guillote. Guillote. Okay, so I learned my lesson from the previous game, I think. Maybe I can play a walrus. Oh, maybe I'll play a Stafford Gambit. <laughs> Let's see how Stafford theory works in this. Okay, opponent wants to take my thing. I think I know enough not to blunder my king. Hmm. Can I get away with this? Oops, I have to freeze first and then do this. Okay. <laughs> Now, I'm not winning here. There's, I think there's like one way for white not to lose this. Or one, one idea to get out of the predicament. I wonder, wonder what's more valuable, like the freeze or the jump? Yeah, okay, so my bishop is now frozen. But I can play this to the fend. And now the opponent can't use the freeze, so they have to either take the bishop or or move the king. And now my freeze will replenish first, but then they'll their freeze will replenish right after mine. H3 is maybe coming. Hmm. I think I just defend. Oh, wait, I just allowed H3. Ah. Yeah, I'm either losing my knight or my bishop. I guess I'll lose my knight. 
Oh no, my knight. Oh, thank you. I so am I. Or I so aim. Also, uh, I lose my knight, but my opponent loses their rook. <laughs> it's a cool idea. I fell for the bait. Okay, now my jump hasn't replenished, but my freeze has. But so is my opponent's. Why can't I freeze and play knight 93? I think if I went for the freeze, my opponent would be able to freeze back. So it kind of would have canceled out. I'm realizing with this game, like freezes kind of cancel each other out. So jumps might actually be like the more interesting thing to use. Although, I guess I'm threatening to I'm threatening to take and then if the counter freeze happens. Oh no, it doesn't cancel each other out cuz I can t I can uh freeze and then take the bishop. And then if the opponent counter freezes a rook, my queen will be able to move and defend. I didn't take the knight because two things could have taken and I didn't I don't think I had a, a easy way to defend there. Yeah, I don't think we can use both spells at once, unfortunately. Oh, I have my jump spell. Oh, I'm gonna win. I mean I'm gonna play this. And now when the queen takes, I jump over and take the king. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I feel unstoppable. GG. Okay, I have time for one more game. So I'm looking for ratings. Best rating. It's not saying the ratings though. 1527. 1544. Okay, let's play this person. Five minute spell checks. Fallen Gandalf. Sounds like a wizard name. Okay, so I've learned not to play the Scandi. I think the Stafford is okay though. What is what's White trying to do? I'm scared that this is some opening theory. I have to be really careful here. I really gotta watch out for these jumps. Maybe I'm threatening to take and freeze. Yeah, I'm realizing the freeze is most useful when you can follow it up with like a strong move. Oops. I lost a bishop. Can I? F no, if I freeze, there's a counter freeze. What if I. What if I just play this? I guess we traded. I traded a bishop for my opponent's jump. So it's not the worst thing ever. I wonder if a jump, like having a jump is worth a minor piece. It's an interesting gambit. Hey. Uh, I'll use my jump and take the queen. <laughs> Queens have to be super powerful in this game. With, with the existence of the jump. Uh, do I freeze... Probably not. Although I could take and then freeze. Maybe I'll take and freeze. Or uh, freeze and take. Like freeze and then take. 
So the idea is if the opponent counter freezes my knight, I can defend with either pawn. And there's no way to freeze both pawns and the knight because they're outside of the three square radius. So I hope this makes sense. Oh, there's a question about queen e6 earlier in freezing. If my opponent played queen e6, I would have just counter use a counter freeze and prevent queen takes king. I think. Not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure I would be okay there. Yeah, so now I can play f5. And basically we traded freezes, but I won a pawn, so that was a pretty good trade. Now opponent is threatening to jump and win my thing. So probably king of uh... Oh, this can be annoying though. King e7? Play king f7. Not sure the best way to do this. Wait, I don't have a freeze. Oh, but my opponent doesn't have a freeze either. Okay, so now I do have a freeze. I take. So if I take, the freeze replenishes. But I think I'll. I think I'll use it. And try and win the knight. This game is very mind bending. Wait, am I losing? I think my opponent had this and freeze my king and pawn. They maybe could have won there. But now I'm okay. I can take here. Actually, I think. I'll have to analyze afterwards. I'm pretty sure in that situation I could have used the jump to block the check. But I was very close to losing there. Man, it's still so tricky though. So now it's probably time to like get the queen into play. I want to take the pawn, but the opponent can jump. Oh, but they have one jump left. So they are threatening to take the rook. So how about this move? Man, so I really have to see, like, white's things are looking at things. I should play c6 next. Just be solid. Ooh. Okay, my opponent's trying to set up this very devious tactic. But... The thing is they can't jump over two squares. They can only jump over one square. So I, applying the jump to this pawn won't do anything. Oh, we both have our freezes left. Oh, it's double check. So if I take the bishop, I lose my king because the opponent can jump. But thankfully, I have this, this, and jump over the pawn to take the king. Uh, too strong. Man, it's so easy to blunder the king in this game. Opponent had tunnel vision on my king. Good game. I want to analyze real quick. Uh, I don't know if I can turn off challenges. But there's a moment. So when I, yeah, when I took and froze this area, my opponent could have played this. Or she could have played this and froze this. And then I'm just losing, I think. I think earlier I thought I could use my queen to jump, but the queen's also frozen. So, yeah, my, my use of the freeze was a big mistake. Oh, man. I could have... Jump castled after the bishop check. 
is jump casting a thing? I didn't even think about that. But I can't jump. I can't take my own queen when I castle. I don't think. Now I have a I have a question. Like in the opening, if I want to be fancy, is is this a legal move? Use a jump like this. It is. Probably no reason to ever do that. <laughs> but pawns, that's the only reason to jump, I guess, with a pawn. Or that's the only way to use the jump for a pawn is to when you move the pawn two squares. Yeah, I wonder, can you jump castle? Can I play a game? I can't. Archive. So I'm just curious. I just want to analyze a little bit. So here, here. Here, oops. So here, you can pre move in an analysis board. Wow, next level. And then here. <laughs> so I'm curious if, like in this position, can we see a jump castle? If I apply the jump spell to B8, can black castle here? So much suspense. No. We can't castle. That's sad. So, can you jump on Passant? I don't even know how that would work. <laughs> I guess you could, like, there's a situation, let's say this, this, this. I could play this and then this. And then on Passant is not legal. And that, that should be an instant loss, or at least an instant bricking, because the pawn is frozen. And then the next move, like en passant, is not possible, even if it's pre-moved, right? Pre-move en passant, not possible. Anyway, I have to go. Thanks, everyone, for watching. For those that didn't see my latest YouTube upload, check it out. This is the thumbnail. <laughs> It featured some uh, some giga chess. Oh, also, yeah. Let me uh, let me do the outro for YouTube. Um, if this goes on YouTube, let me know what you think about spell chess. Let me know if you want to see more spell chess, or if this was overly confusing. But I had fun. Maybe I'll try and find some uh, some stronger competition. Try and improve my spell game. Also, big thank you to all the birthday wishes and support. Thank you, Happy Stewart. Don't eat too much cake. <laughs>